Hello again, this is Rich Troxler, aka Rich Trox, and welcome to another installment of my surf fishing video series. In these parts, the season is winding down, so most of us will have plenty of time to tune up our tackle. One of the tasks that befalls us is replacing hooks on the plugs we've used because salt water can and will rot them out over a year's time. Many fishermen simply replace the hooks that are on their plugs with the direct replacement, and that's fine if you do. But over the years, I couldn't help but experiment a little to see if I could improve results, and I'll share my observations with you in this video. And for those who are newer to the sport and have never replaced hooks, get ready to learn how it's done. So let me get the disclaimer out of the way. The information provided on this video is based solely on my own experiences and should not be considered the be-all and end-all of fishing. It is intended solely to stimulate thought, provide direction, and encourage experimentation in the sincere hope that it may be of help to you on your surf fishing journey. End of disclaimer. First, we'll take a quick look at how hooks are hung on most plugs. Many smaller minnow body plugs have a wire hanger to which a split ring is attached and the hook gets attached to the split ring. Other plugs use a through wire from which a barrel swivel is hung and the eye of the hook is cut, then bent, and placed through the ring of the barrel swivel and then bent back to secure the hook. These are the two most common ways. So to replace hooks on your plugs, you're going to need a few tools to make the job easier. Here's the short list. Heavy duty 8 inch or 9 inch diagonal cutters for cutting the hook's eye loop. I've also used in cutting nippers. High leverage 8 inch or 9 inch linesman's pliers for bending the cut eye hook. If you have a bench mounted vise, that's even better. And split ring pliers for replacing split rings and getting hooks on split rings. That pretty much covers it. You'll also need an assortment of treble hooks and split rings. I'll state the obvious and say right up front that when replacing components on plugs, you want the strongest and best quality components you can get. Don't skimp on this stuff, period. For split rings, there are several good manufacturers such as Roscoe, Raskow, and Wolverine. And for strong hooks, there are really only two major players here, Mustad and VMC. There's a few others like Gamagatsu and Owner, but definitely stay away from Eagle Claw. I stick with Mustad 3X Strong and VMC 4X and 6X Strong hooks and have found that a selection of sizes from 1, 1 aught, 2 aught, 3 aught, 4 aught, and 5 aught has pretty much covered every plug I've ever owned. I use either Mustad 3X or VMC 4X for plugs where the hooks are cut and bent. This is because I've never been able to cut and bend a VMC 6X strong hook, so I use them with split rings exclusively. It should also be noted that VMC hooks run about a half size smaller than their Mustad counterpart, so I usually bump up to the next highest size when switching from a Mustad to a VMC hook, and sometimes I'll go even larger, and I'll explain why. I come from an engineering background, so I can't help but look at everything from the perspective of, can it be improved? One of the things I noticed right away on many plugs is that the hooks, specifically the hook radii, are too small, and the hooks are mounted too close to the plug body to ensure good hook sets. Think about it for a minute, and please forgive the crappy graphics, which are not exactly to scale and are just to illustrate a point. The plug body is solid, so it's not going to give it all, which means that when you set the hook, the fish's mouth is going to slide off the plug and hopefully catch the hook. Most hits come from underneath, so with the small hooks close to the plug body, the best you can hope for is a lip-hooked fish, which means the fish has a much better chance of freeing itself from the hook, either by rolling or leveraging against the plug body. A larger hook with a wider radius further off the plug body gives you a much greater chance of a better hook set and less lost fish. I started experimenting with larger hooks on certain plugs that I felt had too small of hooks and immediately saw better hookups and more landed fish. I have gradually come up with optimal sized hooks for the plugs that I use a lot and this is where a word of caution is in order. Every plug is different in terms of how they take modifications. Some are very modification friendly and some are not. 
Most minnow-bodied plugs will take larger hooks and other modifications well, but plugs like metal lips typically don't. So it's always important to test swim any plug you make a change to before taking it out fishing. Now that we've established that I like to move up to larger hooks whenever possible, let's get down to the basics of hook swapping. We'll start with minnow bodies that have wire hangers. The first thing you'll need to do is remove the old hooks and split rings. You can do this either by cutting them off with diagonal cutters or unthreading them using the split ring pliers. Next, you'll want to match the size split rings and hooks if you're already sure that they are the size you want to go with, or experiment some by going larger. After you've made your selections, you use the split ring pliers to thread the split ring onto the wire hook hanger, and then again to get the hook started into the split ring so it can be threaded on. Split ring pliers are a little clumsy to use, but with a little practice they get the job done. Split ring pliers have a protrusion at one end of the tip. This is for spreading the ring for getting it started on either the wire or the hook eye. Once it's started, you use the flat section behind the protrusion to push the ring along until fully threaded and the ring and or hook hangs free. Here's a closer look at the process. So what I'm doing is I'm taking the uh, split ring pliers and I'm using the front protrusion to try and jam open the split ring and get the hook started. Now that the hook is wedged in there, I'm going to check to make sure it's in there and get it in a good position. Then I'm going to use the flat sections to just roll the ring through the hook eye, kind of like taking a, a key off a key ring. And you just roll it, use it, and just roll it through until the hook comes off. So now you have just the uh, split ring on the wire hanger. Then you do the same thing. You use that front protrusion on the pliers to spread it apart, get it started on the wire. And then you use the flax section just to spin it off the wire. And there you go. And when you put the hooks on, you do it in reverse. You take the protrusion and you get it up relatively close to where the split ring is, not too far back but just close enough so that you can split it wide enough to get it over the wire and get it started. Then you work your split ring pliers off so that it doesn't pop off. Then you use the flat section, you spin it on, spin the uh, split ring on the wire till it's fully on. So it's dangling on. Then you're going to do the same thing for the eye of the hook. They don't go on quite so easy. So you get it split. You get the hook on. And then you got to very carefully extract the pliers so that the hook doesn't pop out. And once you got it out, you got to kind of handle it carefully so the hook doesn't pop out. Then you use the flat sections and you just start rolling it on. And there you go. You'll notice in a second I'm going to run my thumb by it. These are the larger hooks. And you see how easily it grabs my thumb, the wider hooks, the bigger hooks I put on here. That's the point I was trying to make about the larger hooks. 
Some people like to eliminate the split rings on minnow body plugs and instead cut the eye loop of a hook, bend it, and attach it directly to the wire hanger. I am not in favor of this for two reasons. The first is that by eliminating the split ring, it brings the hook closer to the plug body, which I feel causes more lip hooks and gives the fish more leverage on the hook. The second is that if the eye loop is not fitted perfectly to the wire hanger, the hook will sometimes hang up at odd angles when casted and not hang freely beneath the plug. Now let's take a look at swapping hooks onto a swivel loop. This involves cutting the eye loop of the hook, bending it back enough so that you can attach it to the swivel loop, and then closing it again. So the first step is to select the size hooks you are going to use as replacements. I use either Mustad 3X Strong or VMC 4X Strong hooks for these. The second step is to remove the hooks that are on the plug. You do this by bending it at the cut point until you can remove it or it simply breaks off. The third step is to cut the eye of the hook at the base of the loop. This will require the use of heavy duty diagonal cutters or in cutting nippers. The fourth step is to bend the eye loop open just enough so that you can fit it on the barrel swivel loop. If you bend it too far, it's liable to break. This will require the use of heavy duty linesman pliers or a bench mounted vise if you have one. The last step is to bend the loop closed so that it is nice and even and again this will require pliers or a bench vise. Here's a closer look at the process. As I've already picked out my hooks, the first thing I'm doing is I'm getting the old ones off. In this case, I just bend it until it snaps off because they're old and rusted. So the hook comes off pretty easy. There's the loop from the barrel swivel. So the next thing I do, I have the hook. Now I'm going to cut the, the eye loop down near the base. See Rich Struggle. See Rich Struggle with a tool that's uh, cut too many hooks. But me being stubborn, I'm going to try it again. Oh, look at me struggle. Finally, in frustration and humiliation, I'm just going to give up. Time to go get the nippy cutters. So with the front, with the, uh, with the nippers, no problem. Bink. Hooks cut. Now a bench vise is much better for bending the hook. But in the field, on the beach, you use the linesman's pliers. Apply some pressure. Not too much because you don't want to snap the hook. Just want to open it enough so you can get just slide it onto the uh, ring of the swivel. In this case, I know I got enough, but it just doesn't want to go on. But I never take no for an answer. There, finally got it on. Now the last thing left to do is to bend the hook eye back in place. Now when you cut the hook, a lot of times what happens is right at the cut point you squeeze metal. And you get this little lip of metal at the bottom. So when you try and push the loop back over it, it catches it. So you sit there and you struggle and you try and push it back and you try and push it back. And it doesn't want to go back because it's just rubbing it. So it doesn't really want to go back. So what happens is the best way sometimes is to, is to pull out a little bit on the ring. And all of a sudden it'll snap back just like it did there. You saw it jump as I get photobombed by my cat. And then the rest is just uh, straightening it out. Making sure that it sits you know that the loop is nice and straight so it doesn't hang up in the hanger in the um, swivel loop and there you have it almost stuck myself with the hook 
So that pretty much covers changing hooks on plugs. I'll leave you with these last few tidbits. Don't be afraid to experiment with larger hooks on your plugs. Don't get silly about it, but I found many plugs benefit by bumping the hook size up a notch. And whenever you make any change to a plug, always test swim it first before taking it out fishing. And lastly, when changing hooks, pay attention and use caution. It's very easy to slip and bury a hook deep into your finger or hand, so always work slowly and methodically. Keeping your gear in tip-top shape is one way to increase your catch ratio and helps pass the time during the off-season. That's my view from the beach. So until next time, be well and catch him up.